Woo! What's going on, Colin? Hey. <laughs> Every time I see that intro, I'm like, I am yeah. not worthy to be here. Like, hype, hype. <laughs> hashtag hype. <laughs> What's going on, sure. friends? It's Ryan the Colossus Collector, and uh, thank you for stopping by my channel once again for this third session of the Council of X. And I hereby declare this session or this meeting now in session. Uh, gentlemen, Thank you for being here once again. Uh, of course, we've got Travis yeah, from Comics Limited, hey. Dan from Dan's X-Men Comics, and Eric from SideQuest Comics. And we might have a couple more. <laughs> we had one that had to had to handle some family stuff, so hopefully he can get back in. That was Josh from Sasquatch Comics. And then we might have... Mike from Lunch Money pop in at some point in the next uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We'll see. And we got uh, and the rest of the council. They're sure. busy. They got things going on. So, yep. But that's why we have. Chat. And yes, we will go to the chat. We've got a couple of our friends here. Uh, my our our boy Bruce from up north. Hey, Bruce. Uh, Bruce, I'll, I'll I'll I might as well just spoil it right now. Bruce yeah. is uh, the next guy up. To join the Council of X, he's going to be uh, coming on an X Men collector chat very soon with Dan and I, and then you can see him here on our council meetings right after that's done. So, Bruce, thanks for being here, and then of course Richard Westfall. Up, Richard. Richard, thank you. Hey, Richard, for, for always being here. Really appreciate it. And uh, as usual, I think you know people kind of trickle in as we go live um so hopefully we'll have a few more people but it's friday uh i you know i before we got on here i looked at ig and there were already six different live streams uh going at the same time wow. <laughs> um so i'm i'm there's lots of lots of competition for eyeballs tonight so here we got one more we got jose thank you for stopping in yeah, Ultimate sure. X Men Week. Um, oh, that's, yeah. that's an that's another that's a spicy meatball for me. <laughs> we can get it oh. later. We can right, get into comic, that yeah. a little later. Yeah, uh, the comic book. Um, <laughs> I know Travis came prepared for that. Travis is always ready to go with the modern stuff. Um, oh, there, yeah, there we go. That Momoko. Um, so. This week, we're talking uh, a little bit of X-Men, the animated series. Mm. Uh, it's coming. Oh, sick. The, the continuation of our beloved childhood animated series is coming in the form of X-Men 97. Um, and that's, that's coming out in the next uh, like week. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Something yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I, forget, I forget the date. Um, yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's been lots of chat about that, so we can uh, jump into that uh, tonight as well. We've got some books to look at. Gave the boys some assignments, so uh, we'll, we'll look I, at I, of course, did extra credit, as usual. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> TJ, absolutely. thanks for stopping in tonight. Um, so, I mean, we're of, you know, different age ranges um i'm just curious what each of your guys um memory and like experience was with the original animated series in the 90s um when it when it was you know fresh and and, and seeing we were seeing it for the first time did you watch it did you watch it later on in life did you not watch it at all uh what 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 are your feelings on uh, X Men X Men the animated series the original ones? March twentieth, by the way, is the is March? the date of the X Men ninety seven. Nice March. Yeah, I think okay. Travis sounds like he's got something. You ready, Travis? Up. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. ready, and and I, I'm hoping I'm hoping you don't like you don't not like my answer to the question. Um, Spicy, I like. It. I uh, yeah, I I hated the animation. <laughs> oh. Well, it was, I, 90s. I was. Well, you got to think about this, right? What else came out right around the same time? You had Batman the animated series. You had, Smooth. yeah. You had 
then 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 you had uh, Superman and the Superman animated series, and then Justice League and Batman Beyond. Yeah, Spider Man. Really, you know, I mean, the first X Men series that actually caught my my eye, and I'm not I'm not talking about like when I was a kid. You know, Spider Man and his amazing friends who had you know Firestar and Ice Band in it, so. The X Men essentially were in there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, that that was my that was my jam when I was a kid. That was what I watched. I 1992 when when X Men uh, when the X Men cartoon came out, I was in college. I was, you know, the only thing that it, it, if if Batman the animated series had not caught the attention of a really good friend of mine, I probably would have missed that as well. Um. You know, there was the Spawn series on MTV. There was the Max yeah. series on MTV. Max, yeah. It was all part of Liquid, the the Liquid animation Liquid show. Yeah. Liquid television, yeah, and you know, with Aeon Flux and all those things. But yeah, so anime was kind of like my jam, and X Men was kind of behind the times when it came to the animation. It just had the frame rate wasn't as good as other yeah. other shows, and and so it didn't grab me. I was just like not grabbed by it uh and then of course i went and because wanted to be prepared i went and tried to watch the show on 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 disney plus and yeah i i i could not get into it (laughs) i had a feeling at least one person would would have that take that's totally cool i mean you're you were a, a little older so you had you had kind of more champagne tastes at that time, you know, a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more uh, uh, cur- curated, cultivated uh, of a of a of a taste in in animation. So that's fair, you know. Um, what about uh, what about you guys? Well, I think just this right here probably reveals I'm a little bit in the same boat as Travis. Uh, I was a little old for it when it was on. I was in college when it was on, and we were poor college students. We, we didn't have time to sit and watch it. So we were out, you know, making whatever money we could to pay rent. Um, so I caught it late, like late nineties. I think once it started hitting the VHS, you know, box sets. Um, and I agree with a little bit of what Travis said with the, the animation, it was behind, um, you know, we, we got introduced to Batman, first i think and that spoiled us a bit with the animation style and i don't know if it was at that time i think warner brothers animation was way ahead of what was that fox kids i think is what it was Mm -hmm. on fox kids was new you know they were trying to get something going so they were going pretty low budget um but i will say i liked that it was like story-wise it was cliff notes for x-men you know, yeah. they hit all those story beats. You know, they didn't draw it out too long. And I liked how each episode kind of went into the next. Like you're reading the actual comic book. You know, the stories were all kind of linked in a way. You know, they give you a little nugget in one episode. And then a couple episodes later, it would kind of bloom. So, um, but yeah, I mean, and I have tried to go back and watch it. I like watch it with my wife so she could kind of get to know the characters and stuff. And she was like, eh, you know, so we watched most of it, but it's, it's tough. It was tough. I muscled through. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I, I haven't seen the, uh, the post on, or rather I haven't seen it streaming off of Disney plus. So I'm not sure if the, uh, pixel rate is better, but I have a, okay. Cause I have a, um, like bootleg X-Men DVD that, that well, I it may be with. smoother than that, but <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it is bad, really poor quality, and okay. um, and uh, but when I when I was a kid and I would watch it, it was like that the, that show came out. Uh, you guys are right, like the the um, Warner Brothers DC shows were out, uh, and but it was all about like pogs, trading cards, and and uh, comics was kind of the next evolution for me. Um, but it was, but pogs, trading cards, and then that show, um, would, was what it was all about. Like my friends would, would watch it. And so we were really into it and you're right. Like, I loved how they would, um, kind of compartmentalize like a story arc into one episode. Sometimes they'd have like a series of a few. Part one, part two. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and though, that was where I first heard the stories, like the X-Men stories. So okay. um, so when when I, you know, would read the comic finally, I was like, oh, this is kind of like, <laughs> You're like Wait the show. Right? <laughs> um, but I mean, they get it's way deeper, right? Like it's and, and you know, they will switch out a character for another character or something. Um, but all in all, yeah. really fond memories of it. And I totally agree. Rewatching it, like I don't know. <laughs> you know there's <laughs> very few old cartoons that I grew up with that I loved that I can go back and watch. Like for me, Travis, you can probably account for this. Uh, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Masters of the Universe. They yeah. were great when we were kids. You know, it's that whole introduction to that world. You know, your mind gets blown as a kid. But as an adult, you're like, yeah, they're reusing some animation cells and stuff. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you could go. Go ahead. No, I was going to just, I was just going to tag on the end of that. I, I, yeah, it was those shows that, you know, that's what X-Men, uh, that's what the X-Men show reminded me of is, but it reminded me of going back to G.I. Joe or going back to the older animation style. And, you know, I mean, in the sixties and maybe even in the seventies, Marvel really was cutting edge even into the 80s marvel was cutting edge on animation yeah, i think so. and and it, and and i i mean because you had what you had scooby-doo well everything from warner brothers was either scooby-doo scooby-doo related or if it was anything with super friends right yeah and and so and and those shows felt like they never never grew up they always even when they got added zan and jaina it was never really a grow up it was always still kind of the same thing so uh, that's what I was going to say. Can I ask a question too? Sorry, uh, Ryan, before we get to your uh, your thought about it. The, what other shows were DC shows or Warner Brothers shows? I'm trying to think of like, like there was Batman, obviously. I didn't watch um, Superman. Like, I didn't watch it. I knew they basically drew Clark Kent. Like, I mean, I mean, they drew um, uh, uh, Bruce uh, Wayne, <laughs> you know, basically as Clark Kent, right? Uh, or he had that <laughs> same huge chest. Yeah, Pretty much. Yeah, they had that stylized look, and they yeah. carried that into what Superman and then Justice League. I think it was oh, just okay. Justice League. Okay. Yeah, it was then... Justice League and Batman Beyond. Yeah, but and then wasn't... they did, and then there was Teen Titans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But before the Teen Titans go, when they got yeah. super yeah. anime. Yeah. 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 For yeah. me, for me, X Men is was very impactful um it it is like one of the main reasons why i'm an x-men fan um it was my introductory to a lot of storylines a lot of a lot of characters mm -hmm. and um like weirdly enough like i didn't get into the batman like i didn't like batman and i didn't like any of the, like i liked x-men and spider-man and those were my two cartoons uh, of the superhero genre. I did like like Dragon Ball Z, um, but I think that was even a little bit after X Men. Um, but yeah, like X Men was my my jam, uh, and that's why like I'm also just like I feel precious about it now. Like I'm a little bit concerned about the X Men '97 series in like already some of the things I, I i've heard or i've seen about the animation just like changing things and stuff like okay i don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even know <laughs> all i'm like i guess my whole point is like if you're not gonna keep it like the the way it was and just like because you're trying to you're trying to capitalize on the nostalgia and love everyone has for this show yeah. Yeah. So if you're not going to keep it like a literal exact con continuation with the exact same, like, I mean, I, sure, technology in advances a little bit. There might be a, but like you're, you're changing, you know, the look of things and stuff like that. Like I, then I, why not, why not just do an all new show? You're talking like, about Rogue. Let's just get right down to it. No, no, I'm not even just Rogue. That's one thing. Right. But like, I'm talking about like, haircuts and updating things and just like I all of that they like a little, keep it little the way it was like, yeah. or um just do something completely fresh and new like that 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 would be my my opinion okay on, on it i'm you not saying i'm not to enjoy 
I'm sure I'm going to enjoy X-Men 97. Um, I won't enjoy it as much as I enjoy the previous thing because I'm not, you know, 10. Um, yeah, you <laughs> look I'm, at it with different eyes, so it's kind of hard. Yes, you still get that nostalgia, really but you can't help but look at it differently now. Um, I also want to point out um, what Lizzie had said. I think that that's brilliant um, yeah. about that. I mean, I'll just read it. I, the bottom line is that the show got to the heart of the characters and the stories of the uh, for the audience at the right time. And that's why it resonated beyond production limitations. And uh, totally, because I don't even remember it being bad animation at the time. Now, in hindsight, I see that. But you're totally right. Like, the every story had its own moment where it showed a character's kind of like flaws or like their weakness and why they need each other uh, in order to beat these bad guys. Um, and, and that's that cool. human touch. And the animation. Play. Okay. Like I, I see what you're saying about the animation being um, a little out of, out of date, maybe at the time I, I wasn't old enough to have that as a thing that would hang me up. But like looking back on it now and like having watched rewatch things uh, now as an adult, like I have a really big appreciation too, though, for like the voices and like the, the audio of that show. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we all yeah, know great that. ambience music. We all know the, the, the theme song, like the theme mm -hmm. song is like epic, can't be top. And like it's it is the X-Men song. Um, but like I think of like the sentinels, the way the sentinels sound, like that to me is the sent that is what a sentinel sounds like. Pork in a quarter, like th that whole thing is that was a good impression. <laughs> only it just needs a little bit more of an a, a, like a robotic reverb, but yes, like um, <laughs> But like, yeah, just like the 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 way the laser sounded, like, like Wolverine's voice and Juice's voice and like Storm's voice, like those are that's like the X Men to me. Like, I mean, in live action, that would come across a little corny, but like, that's in my mind. Like, yeah. I read comics; that's how I hear the characters. Like, yeah. again, not as the Australian Wolverine. No, no, from no, no, right no. as the X Men. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh I I I think that besides the look of it, the audio is really really great. And it had its flaws. Yeah. Like if you watch the the brood, the take the 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 version of the brood on that cartoon, it was an abomination. Wait, <laughs> having, I don't even remember that. I remember them doing the the brood, stuff. Right? Having read the brood saga, which is incredible. Yeah, they yeah. like dulled it down so hard, and they made like the brood. I don't even think they were called the brood, they were called uh, whatever they were called. They were like these green aliens, and they looked like not like the brood, and like it was just really, really bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, like they did some butchering to comic stories, but uh, it, I didn't know better back then, right? So <laughs> Well, should we should we show some books that remind us of the of the show? Do you want to move on to that, or did you have yeah. something else? You yeah, wanted? sure. Um, or just before yeah. we get, before we get into that, I do want to just kind of like touch on the fact that X Men ninety seven is coming now. Um, you know, I made the point about it changing, but I do think it's going to be a fun thing to watch. Um, a and yeah. and I'm actually kind of happy, although I'm I, I usually with streaming stuff I like when it all comes out at once and I can just binge it. I'm kind of happy with this program that it is kind of coming out weekly because I don't think I'd be as excited to binge a cartoon, you know, in one session. But like having one episode a week to just like you know take a half an hour and. Just kind of like that too. Then world is kind of nice, so I, I'm looking forward to that. Um, just uh, wondering if you guys had any thoughts on like things you've seen about X Men '97, just in terms of like Magneto's yes. sim costume or anything. Yes. Period. I am so there for that costume. I'm like probably the one of the only people in the world at like the big M costume because that was like close to my introduction to the x-men was when he was wearing that costume so yeah i have kind of a, a soft spot 
in my heart for that. So right around 299. They are JR. Yeah. The trial yeah. Magneto. Yeah. I love that costume. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. He's taking over, right? Like he's going to be, he's going to be, he's going to be Professor Xavier. Yeah. Right. Cause Xavier was in space with Eleandra. So, yep. uh, I, I mean, Sorry. So we need when 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 I I, when I have a question and it's related to the animation. But what did you guys think of X Men Evolution? I mean, because that was the story that actually the art that caught my eye. The art and was that, way better. That's for sure. It was a step up in that. Um, I didn't watch very much of it, to tell you the truth. Either. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, got to, I I think I definitely watched it. Um, but like I, it's just not, it. I they don't changed remember. the characters nope. a little bit, so I wasn't like kind of. I just never. That. I don't remember it. They they mm -hmm. made everybody younger, right? Yeah. Like it was like supposed to be kind of like this teeny or like teenager thing. Like rogue, like they turned rogue into like this emo teenager girl, yeah. right? Right. Um, and like that's the one thing that really sticks out about that show that I remember um, was that rogue was not the rogue that I grew up with. Um, it was, and it felt a little bit more cartoony. Um, whereas like very stereotypical, it had very, you know, strong stereotypes of the characters, you know, like you said, rogue was the, the goth chick. And, and then I think they had nightcrawler in there, but he was kind of like the goofball and Wolverine was the grumpy teacher that was like, Oh, mm -hmm. stop doing that and do your, right. you know, your work, you know? So it was very much like that. Yeah, it and was like, it was Rogue and I mean, it was Wolverine and Storm were the teachers, right? They were the yeah. kind of the adults. Yeah. You had uh, Cyclops was still was a teenager, like a senior in high school. Boy Scout, he was um, still a Boy Scout. <laughs> yeah, and then you and Jean Grey was in high school, so you had you had Storm and Logan teaching the some of the original X Men, right? And so it was kind of a weird twist weird. on that. But uh, but Nightcrawler was the one that kind of he even though he was kind of the misfit kind of typical nerdy kid um in the school uh i what i liked about it is that he was the one that was kind of in between both be, between because there was the the kind of i think it, they weren't the evil they weren't the brotherhood of evil mutants right i mean they were i think but but mystique was this other t was like the principal of the high school yeah i can't remember and they were called like the Hellfire Academy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there was the Hellfire Academy. Yeah, okay, it was the Hellfire Academy. And she kept trying to get uh, these mutants to come to her school because they yeah. wanted to control them because Magneto was behind that. And so uh, I I you know what for me that was the that was the X-Men show that I that I caught I caught because the animation, the art was more of my what I like at that time. I mean so Lizzie just kind of nailed it, right? This is all about when when you find it, right? And like, mm -hmm. so Travis, like this, that X Men Evolution is the one that you, even though you were older, it's the one that you ended up watching, right? And so you have a like a little bit more of an affinity for it, which is uh, like like all things, right? But <laughs> again, like going like comparing it to X Men animated series. X Men anime, anime series was, although for kids, like it felt like the comics, right? Like it, the characters were drawn a little bit more adult, a little bit more like what you would find in the comics. Mm -hmm. And then X Men Evolution was just very much a cartoon, kind of like the Batman. It was more stylized. Yeah, you know. Uh, so mm -hmm. I mean, it's also like you said, a style. Um, What's up, Mike? Yes, hey guys, Mike. Hey, Mike. I came uh, from a comic show actually. Uh, see a little bit longer than I expected. Oh, it was dang. a Friday night thing. So uh, that's happy fun. I made it. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming. I was listening for to it a little bit in the car. So um, <laughs> had to wolf down you're, some food, but I'm here. So sorry, I'm late. You're up to speed on the uh, somewhat up to speed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, sorry. No, go. Well, no, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I, I was just going to acknowledge also like a little bit ago when Richard kind of brought it up to you, or yeah, like, yeah. Was Richard, who had said that like, just like what you were saying, Ryan, you were saying just either do it, you were kind of polar about it, right? Like either just do the exact same thing that you did before or make it completely new. 
and you're feeling a little uneasy about this somewhere in between because he had also asked like who's the who's the show for i mean yeah. in my opinion they're trying to gobble up as many people as they can and try yeah. to cross over in that venn oh. diagram for the yeah. younger audience and the us but, right but that's how but, that's how you get like vanilla like <laughs> yeah you play like, it safe like, right? yeah this is like kind of a, a thing that bugs me in in advertising which i work into right and people go people like people who make ads they'll take things to focus groups and then they'll take everybody's opinion and then they'll water everything down so that they get everybody to like it right but when you get but when they loves you water it. something down and try to like make everybody something for everybody that's when you get this kind of blander less enjoyable thing as opposed to okay we're gonna do we're gonna go this way and it's gonna really stand out you know what i mean it might not people over here might not like it but it's definitely gonna stand out from the crowd as opposed to having this sort of let's please everybody approach yeah there you go something for everybody and it gets mm -hmm. watered down yeah yeah so you i'm hoping that's not what for everybody i don't care what toppings you like Everybody gets cheese. Um, <laughs> hey, how about um, Mike? Why don't you tell us about your experience with the cartoon, the original cartoon, and what oh, your okay. thoughts of are of the upcoming? That's what we sure. were kind of at. Uh, so I have a funny story for all you. I don't want to completely date myself here, but uh, yeah, well, you know, I watched it, when it already. Out, right, I was already reading comic <laughs> books. I was really into. Hey, there's Josh. What's up, buddy? Uh, hey guys, is this where the X Men chat is? Well, <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I was uh, I was really an X Men already, and then I remember hearing about this X Men show. Now, remember, guys, back in the early '90s, you couldn't just watch things whenever you wanted. It was on TV. You had to wait for them to be on. And not only that, there was we didn't even have a guide on the TV itself. You had to open the TV guide. So I was watching cartoons one morning, and I saw the preview for this X Men cartoon. I'm like. Oh my God, this is it. This is the moment I couldn't wait. I thought it was coming out the next week. So the next week, Saturday, I got up early, not knowing when it started. I sat there and watched cartoons from like 7 a.m. to 11, no X Men. And then I sat down the next week, same thing, all day, no X Men. I didn't know when it was actually premiering. And I did that for four weeks in a row before it finally <laughs> came out. I had no idea. You had no way of looking it up before it finally came out at like nine on a Saturday morning. Uh, and I was hooked. And here's the thing about it. And it's funny. I was listening to all of you guys. Things you said. Yeah, I even thought the animation was kind of wonky. Uh, I was mad that the source material it was, didn't match it at all. At all. Like, right? That was the first time I was like, where's my Nightcrawler? Where's Colossus? Where's Iceman? Like, it drove me nuts. But I was just happy to have any comic book cartoon content, especially the X-Men. I did not care. It actually kind of made it exciting because I didn't know what to expect week to week at all. Like, oh, there, it's a completely different story. So it was uh, very formative uh, for me. I would record it on my VCR for you kids out there. If you know what a VCR is, I would <laughs> record it. And I would watch them again. And for my birthday and Christmas, people would get me VHS tapes of the X-Men. So, yeah, it, it is uh, – I'm not even going to say love-hate. It's love, love, love all the way around, even acknowledging it, you know, warts and all. So that's my experience with it. I absolutely loved it. It was incredibly important for me. Um but the new series, yeah, it's nostalgia for older people. This is where the world th uh, thrives right now. They're leaning into the 80s because it's all of the people who are the disposable income are all in the 40s now, and this is it. So this is what they're leaning into in everything in this day and age. The 80s are hot, the 90s are hot, and that's what they're doing. However, you know, yeah. darn if I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to watch every single one. Yeah. I don't care. It's going to hopefully I get the nostalgia feels. The animation's clearly better, so that'll be fun. I'm happy to watch it with my kids. Awesome. It. It's great to hear your perspective because you had read the the stories first, yes. whereas like, you know, I was just familiar with the cards and, and just seeing them around and knowing who the names are, but not really understanding the story arcs. I remember the first episode, Morph. Who the heck is Morph? I didn't know it was Changeling. I hadn't read those little things. I'm like, so they making up characters now just to kill them off? Like, it bothered me, <laughs> you know, and I know, and truth be told, you know, they were supposed to use Thunderbird and they decided not to. They uh, thought people would be in uproar about, you know, killing off uh, the only Native American. Instead it was... More, yeah. More. yeah. <laughs> and I think I've seen that okay. that first pilot like a hundred times. Oh yeah, they oh, reran that all the they time. They reran all the time. And I, that was shocking for me when he when he died. Even yeah. in the like, it was in the very first episode, right? That he died. Yeah. yeah. I remember just being like, I can't like, I couldn't believe he it. Hardcore. Died. Right. Yeah. 
Um, I didn't the love his Jubilee as a main character because yeah. I wasn't familiar with Jubilee. I remember I read the older X Men books from like the eighties, so even Jubilee was kind of like a new character for me, um, mm -hmm. which is fine. But I didn't know much about Gambit. I knew who he was, but I didn't like him until the X Men animated series. You know, I didn't like fall in love with him. So, yeah. I mean, is he even a likable guy? I mean, like he's witty. Gambit always awesome. Is yeah okay. Yeah. It's an edgier character, right? Like yeah. people love Wolverine, you know, Gambit. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, he's the yeah, latest okay. guy, you know, he doesn't give a he's also like in the show a lot, he 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 he'll like take off or he, I'm not doing that, you know. He kind of like marches. He's rebellious. He's rebellious yeah. and yeah. as my so wife that. says, flirty. Yeah. yeah. Flirty. It's, it's flirty. fun to have that. So yeah. it's a younger Wolverine, really, when it comes down to <laughs> He has such a cool style. I just like his style. You know? Sorry, yeah, sorry, man. Yeah, he is flashy. Yeah, yeah. We gave away That's that true. morphed eyes in the first episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. my bad. 30-year-old spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I hear you. Like, yeah. yeah. Gambit has always been a huge character. Like, pe you know, people love Gambit. My friends, that that was their favorite character. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he definitely was the cool. I think he is the character that benefited the most from the cartoon, by far. 100%. Yeah, by far. Oh, sure. Cool, cool Cajun accent. Like he always, he's always Touch hitting on rogue. rogue. Hitting on rogue, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely benefited huge from the from the. The, the thing with Gambit is Gambit had the heart of the gal we all wanted, but Gambit, not included, none of us could have him. But he wanted her anyways, yeah. and that's really romantic. So I think the romantic in Gambit. Is what real? That's at the heart like of the that. character. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is a. If you're thinking of a quintessential character for like D and D and all that stuff, he is the rogue, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah. and so when he when you think about it, he's the he's the Han Solo. He's the he's the everything. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, uh, and so. Person. And so and and that part of it is the charm that would allow him to get so get. Get together with someone like Rogue, right? And so, and persistent. But he's also, he does have hypnotic charm too. It's part of his mutant ability. Yeah. So you wonder how much of it is uh, <laughs> just that. I always forget about that one. Oh, it's his superpower. It's, it's on the card, man. It's, it's his hypnotic charm. That hypnotic I really appreciate you guys bringing accent. that back to for me to remember. Like, like what's cool about him? So oh, he's awesome. I used to I talk about being a nerd. I was a huge nerd like in middle school and i would like i live next to like a baseball park and i would like oh no one's looking i put on like my dad's trench coat and a, a, a 52 <laughs> cards in my wallet and my inside pocket and, like hucking cards all over the i mean it was, oh. awful. It was terrible. oh my god oh, I, can <laughs> see it gloves, I, I flipped off just two fingers or whatever right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, i mean like who didn't make cardboard um you know Claws, Wolverine claws, you know, like just, just over yeah, my mom sewed or, or, me you know, a, bought most a Wolverine sweatshirt. <laughs> that reminds me, one more thing uh, on the new thing. The coolest thing about this new show coming out, though, is the fact there's merch again. So I was at Walmart the other day, <laughs> and I always I was yeah. buying something else, and nothing to do with that. But I always check the toy section just to see, and they actually had X Men '97 stuff. And my, there you go. Yes, there it is. That's yeah, exactly back you it. Eric. I, I saw got tons of show. stuff. And I found something that I'm pretty excited about. You guys have seen I have a Wolverine costume. It didn't have the mask. Well, guess what? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seven dollars at Walmart. It's just small for me. A, a kid. is a kid size. Amount, that is affordable. Mind. Yeah. And, and the, the figures, too. How much are the figures? Uh, I can't remember. I, I think it's like under 10 bucks. Like 20 bucks. Right? No, like 20 bucks. Or yeah, 20 it really has the Wolverine like the normal Marvel Legends. Oh, okay, I thought they were like ten or something. So I found an item that I'm looking. I, I'm I'm waiting Still. to buy. I, um, I'm not going to talk about it yet. I'm going to show it when I get it. But it is awesome, and it's an X Men '97 item. Who's that Bishop? Okay. Yeah, they did Bishop in series one. No, you're not going to talk. Series about two is coming out. No, soon. no, no. I want to show it. I want to. I want to okay. give it. To, well, let's, let's see. see. Let's hear, uh, um, Josh. Let's hear about yeah. your experience with the with the original show, and then your thoughts about um, about this upcoming show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I didn't see what you guys said, so if I'm redundant, I hope it's funny. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like the chicken to the egg. I don't really know in my comic book nostalgia and timeline whether I read Jim Lee's X Men One or saw the show for the first time. I think I read the books before the show, but 
you know, catching the tail in a mics. Like I remember the Saturday mornings, like I'd never been in more like a tunnel visioned, you know, anticipation doing like the happy pee pee dance, you know, like <laughs> totally. And then the music hits and it just, it, it's like an out of body experience. Yes. Yes. And mm -hmm. it's still to this day, when I hear that shit, it hits fucking hard. Every time. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> And I just I love that that we're 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 getting this again and like I don't know yeah like Mike said they're playing to all the you know we're the we're the demographic that is so pumped right now um, but I really hope that uh, this show kind of like brings the general audience and all of us up to speed on like Kevin Feige's vision for X Men. And they really have to, you know, show us that the, you know, that these are the marginalized, these are the freaks, these are the, you know, the persecuted in all of us and make it real and believable. And what better way than like playing to our nostalgia animation, bring, you know, the power bases, like just seeing Wolverine running with his claws and then Gambit jumping on his back and lighting up his, I mean, when you look at the like what would actually happen to Wolverine's claws, we can debate that. But like, like just seeing that, oh man, that's a promise of something beautiful. And I really hope that Bob Iger is um is serious and in like you know, uh, you know, more uh, better content instead of you know quality over quantity. Yeah, um, and that it comes true in this. And I'm super pumped that we're getting Hugh Jack and Wolverine and that whole like 20th Century Fox X Men franchise, Swan Song, and you know X Men '97. So as X Men fans, oh man, this is this is the best time. This We've been waiting time. a while, right? It's time. It's time <laughs> to get some of this stuff going in the outside of comics. X Men um, to me, <laughs> I, I I'm on. Like you, you, you talked about the song. Uh, I, I'm actually that's probably the thing I'm most looking forward to about the new the new show is just to see what they do with the opening. Like what are they gonna do with that song? Twenty synchronized do, electric do a, guitars. <laughs> it better, it better <laughs> open up. Are they gonna do the individual character, you know, introductions like they did in the in the original series, or is it gonna be just something completely new? We'll see. I'm, I'm when that track hits though, the blinders. I just feel like yeah. I know what you're talking about, Josh. The song hits and everything fades out all around you. And you're Dude, just that, like that part when you. Magneto just goes da -na -na -na, and the yeah. ring. Oh man, like yeah. and again, <laughs> one how iconic it is. My daughter's barely heard that theme a couple times. She she see me watch it. She put this mask on and the claws, she was running around and she started going and da -da -na 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 -na. I was like, <laughs> even she knows it. It's 30 years old. She's heard it twice and it's stuck You've in her head. You've done well, sir. Like, You've done her. well. Yeah. <laughs> I had a moment. I was like, oh, this is wonderful for me. You know, that is the moment. All, all dads, all ex dads. Yeah. Long <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, I here's my prediction for the like the very first beat of the show is that you're gonna hear Cyclops's voice go previously on X Men. Uh, yeah, He'll catch us up and then boom, yeah. right into the intro. I will yeah. say, I did notice in the preview, you know, that unfortunately, the, uh, the couple of the people who did the voices have passed away the guy that's Cyclops and Magneto. Um, that Cyclops voice, man, I it's right next to Wolverine is the most iconic voice of that show, and it it kills me. Uh, it yeah. makes me so sad. And the Wolverine voice in that trailer was not the. It's Wolverine. him though. I it's know, but it, it doesn't awesome. sound like him. I know. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, a little long, long, right? I'm a little concerned about that. Beast, though, I think will will pretty much be the same because I've actually heard that guy because he goes to a lot of cons and stuff. He goes so, a lot of cons. Like, so. I, show, I see him on uh, on IG pop up and like he still can do the voice pretty good so um, oh my stars and garters yeah yeah <laughs> edgar Allan poe that's great <laughs> <laughs> he always quotes like these great thinkers and liter literary uh giants i love it i was also disappointed when i went to new orleans and people don't actually speak with a cajun accent like that <laughs> like at all like nobody oh, does got, yeah like Mike, if you, you want to watch a van damme movie Hard target. That's that's gambit go. right there. There you go. 
But they don't actually yeah. like they don't throw the French in. Like they just have the accent. You know, I like he actually speaks French, you know, yeah. like throughout the show. It's like Yeah, but you gotta go to like the Cajun part of Louisiana, right? Like, have you ever watched um Swamp People? Um yeah. on yeah. this channel. The, a bunch of those <laughs> they're not as smooth as Gambit, obviously, but they definitely got the that oh, that yeah. Cajun accent down there. It's just if you guys go to Cape Cod, you can see bog people. That's where I come from. <laughs> kind of the same. <laughs> I went on a bayou tour in in Louisiana to see alligators, and I was and the guy was an actual Cajun. I got all excited, and it, I was expecting Gambit, and I didn't get Gambit. <laughs> We're gonna see some alligators today. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. All right. You want you guys want to look at some books? So what are we doing first? Uh, let's do the well. Since we're talking about animated uh, series, let's do the five books that uh, remind us or or I make us think of animated. the animated series. All right, you're gonna have to give me a few minutes because I just got home. I'll yeah, you don't have to go series. first. No, don't worry. No, Eric can put put them up for all of us. I'm sure five for each of us, right? <laughs> Eric's <laughs> always got the stacks. Just. Fat stacks of X Men. Go oh, for it, Eric. Yeah, burn right, it. I don't know if I should go first because it's kind of like if you guys throw one up, it's good chance it's in this <laughs> back. Well, okay, so Eric. I I kind of went to where the towards what you said at the uh, at the outset of what it was was you know things that would remind you of the animated series or yeah. were related to it, but but I I went with the other way around because I was thinking okay since I didn't really watch the animated series, I went with what could be related to that animated series because of the time frame. And so even though I kind of gave a little bit of away when I was talking about the stuff at the very beginning, um, I was really, I was kind of bummed. I couldn't, I couldn't pick up a couple books I wanted to get for the show, but just time wise. So I have to, I have to kind of do some, uh, I'll, I'll have to uh, show some books and kind of think through it. So Travis, well, there are so, no rules. There are no rules to these assignments. <laughs> So. Well, I, I decided I'd pick my favorite uh, era uh, X Men cover for me. One, of the, and then I feel like it really captures all the X Men, especially the people that were in the show, with exception of Jubilee. And that would be uh, Jim Lee's cover for X Men number three. Oh yeah, I just, good. I just, I love this cover. All the X Men are kind of fighting each other, you know, red versus blue. Um, and uh, or gold versus blue, and it's just one of those books that I think really captures it. You got Gambit up there at the top, you got Rogue down here in the bottom, you got Wolverine, you got Beast, you got Psylocke, you got Jean Grey, you got Storm. It just and, and, and Jim Angel Lee of Colossus. Course. Don't you forget Jim Lee Colossus? Oh, no, Jim Lee Colossus, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's just one of my favorite covers of all time. It's kind of like. I love that this this cover is like a if I would play this with this or that I would probably put this with the uh, this or that would have been like uh, doing the uh, cover by um, Arthur Adams showing uh, the from that that uh, from the X Men special issue the one that they yeah. did the white cover classic I love that cover too yeah oh classic and then, classic and then uh, I, yeah well I guess classic X Men no but I'm thinking of the one that was the X Men special that had the red and blue label late logo on it. It has Wolverine with his claws out on the front, and everybody's kind of behind him. And Classic like, stand by him. I, 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 I could probably pull it in that bo in that <laughs> box right there. If we have time, um, yeah, right. All right. Well, and then so I was thinking Batman the animated series, and I I, I hadn't shown this to anybody yet, but you know, I had a trade with Big B this weekend Ooh, or last congratulations. weekend. Congratulations. And so I, I got a grail that I didn't, it wasn't on my list of grails to get. So, but you know, that's a good one. Anyway, yeah. So, first Harlequin, you know, in comic books and all that stuff. So, ask, that wasn't sorry, yeah. Travis. The, the, um, what makes that a five? It looks so nice. Yeah. I, my father and I, I both looked at it. There's a lot of spine ticks on it. I mean, you can, okay. if you get in there real close, there's a bunch of spine I, did, I see. Okay. But also, yeah, I also but, understand that modern comics kind of, kind of tend to get a little more. Uh, it has a bit of a spine roll. Um, it okay. could be. It, it does not look like it was pressed or cleaned, so it could go up if it got a pressing. I think, but that I mean, and that's that's possibly right. Yeah, great acquisition, but, though. Right. So, Batman the animated series. 
one of my favorite series is of that period, of that era in time. And so I wanted to show, I would actually, wanted, I, I wish I had the variant cover of this, but Dark Claw, Legends oh, yeah. of the Dark Claw, Wolverine. This is the tie in to Batman uh, for the X Men. And this was the one I, I wanted to do, I, I thought would be cool to show. So it kind of ties back to X Men, even though it's also ties to the, if you, there's a variant cover of this that shows is the same as the Batman the Animated Series issue one that shows Dark Claw, but it looks like Batman the Animated Series. So that's the main reason why I picked the that one. That was one of the books I didn't get to pick up beforehand, but I had that, so I thought I would share two, that. The two animated series come come together in one. Cover. Exactly. <laughs> so also that came out in the '90s, another animated series that I watched. The first couple issues uh, episodes of but oh my gosh when i say the x-men animation was bad i would love i would watch the x-men animation a hundred times more than ever watching the wildcats animated oh. series ever again yeah but in the 90s you had x-men you had the x-men series the wildcat series came out so i figured wildcats x-men would be a great crossover I prefer the other cover, but since this one had a better picture of Wolverine on it, myself, and it was Jim Lee, I thought, yeah, oh, let's go with Jim Lee, and it, and it, it's got a kick-ass, you know, kick-ass booty shot, and you know everything else, and and Wolverine looks pretty awesome in this picture too, and it's one of my favorite stories of all time, and I actually have, they used to have the, they used to send out to comic shops these uh, previews that were of the comic issue that were just on printer paper, essentially, right? And they'd go in a notebook, and you could preview the comic when it before it came out. And I have that issue in its preview format. And it's so cool, because it's totally different. Hmm. <clears throat> so my number three book, I was going to try to find a Marvel Comics Presents Sam Keith cover, Wolverine cover. And it looks like Wolverine's kind of like my tie to everything. He was kind of the tie to everybody anyway. But I just decided to pull up Max number one because it's the Max story that was in the 90s, the Max animated series from uh, Liquid Television that would also came out in the 90s. That was, you know, so amazing, so different and unique compared to other stuff out there. The animation was, you know, taking Sam Keith's art and animating it uh, through uh, the different types of things. And it just was really great. And so that, is my other series that that I would tie that was kind of tied to in that time frame, and I loved it because it was the comic book, but it was a little bit different, and it was kind of this it was weird and wacky, and I and I loved that, and I was kind of in weird wacky stuff at that point in time in my life, <clears throat> but finally my final one, and I tried to find some sort of crossover between X Men and Spawn, but there wasn't. So I, I'm showing Spawn number one because there was the Spawn animated series that came out in the 90s as well from Liquid Television oh, or on MTV. And so another animated HBO. series. HBO. Oh, was it HBO? I thought it was MTV. Was it HBO? Okay, there we go. That's why I couldn't. Anyway, but yes, the HBO seri animated series. My parents had HBO and we had cable, so we were able to watch. I was able to watch it. It was really dark. And they probably would have, if they would have known what I was watching, they probably wouldn't have let me. <laughs> <laughs> but so tied to all this, the animation of that time, that was, those were the things that were grabbing my eyes and capturing my attention. And that's all like right around 19, you know, the comics were all around the same time era as that, that stuff that came out. So it was all very 1992 to 1995. And then the animated series were all intermixed in between there. And, that that stuff uh, is probably what kept me from watching X Men, but you know it's funny. I was thinking about it, as you guys were talking about the storylines. I was like, I think I watched it later on, like in like a, like in a on a DVD set. I think I someone said, "Oh, you need to watch these," and they would send give me like little story arcs of the DVDs, like uh, series one or. Series two, because you know they like released them in weird orders because they were yeah kids they had these releases. like random DVDs with different episodes. I had one of those. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, so they haven't had some that came with comics, if I remember correctly, too. Like they had a couple not for real sale comics that came with uh, some sets. Um, anyway, but that so that those are my those are my five. Nice, awesome. Who wants to go next? I'll go. 
All right, Mike's up. All right, so I and grabbed it again. Travis. No crap. I just grabbed these really quick. Um, I think we can all agree the entire Jim Lee run, we'd all be on board with. It reminds us. Um, I know someone else has grabbed this comic book. That's why I want to go first because I'm a jerk. Someone <laughs> <laughs> else grabbed it? All right. X Men right. Eleven, of course. I Classic, thought it, uh, it was too obvious. <laughs> it was too obvious. I know. Again, I was. I didn't have time to prep and think of something clever. It, it's oh. it's right. It's right there. Pretty much, it is right. Hey, um, I I never have a problem looking at that cover. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, next up, the most I drawn cover of all time. Uh, I realized this book when I was looking through my X Men run. I was missing it, and I remember my sister, my little sister, took it years ago. Yeah. We just talking about Gambit, right? Gambit Rogue, the uh, they're shipping here. I, I just love this cover; it's fantastic. Shows awesome cover. The girl we all we all love, and then you know the guy we think we well we don't want to be. So it's just an awesome cover. Shows the love and the amazingness in X Men. Uh, and mm -hmm. hey, while I picked that one out, I think I grabbed this one as well. You know, um, I don't remember they actually got, they never got married in the series, did they? Yeah, they uh, did. I Oh. Didn't they go on like a honeymoon and then they get kidnapped by by uh, Sinister? Sinister. Sinister. Was They're on the island. Island. Mm -hmm. It was near I'm the end, sure. right? And well, like I, I think Classic. I think Wolverine didn't want to be there, and he might have taken off. I I can't remember. Anyways, they all kind of like did. Yeah. yeah. So classic same thing. Sing on the love theme. Uh, this one just God. This screams early '90s X Men and the anime show mm. X Men Three Hundred. There's you guys, everyone knows this one. Like of it. Yeah. I love this one too because this is, even though again it's not based on the TV show, this screams the TV show. You basically got yeah, yeah everyone in the uh, costumes yeah. plus Bishop right there. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, and last but not least, huge shout out to my uh my friend Josh here. This is the most on the nose book we'll find, and I'm sure someone's got this too. Next <laughs> Adventures number one based on the cartoon. There it is. I Sorry, thought of that one too, but I don't have it. So yeah, so here's the thing with this book. This one here was actually given to me by Josh as supposed to be a giveaway for my channel, one of my giveaways, which I did. I did a giveaway. Hey, you can win this and a bunch of other stuff. And it was never claimed. So I've been meaning to give it away again for sitting in my giveaway. Free Send giveaway. it to Ryan. <laughs> my, my monster Ryan? giveaway didn't get claimed either. So I'm going to have to redraw that thing. It's happened twice to me, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you, if you need this, Ryan, you win it if you want. Richard yeah, Clare. Richard Clare. Richard Clare. <laughs> away on the channel right now, right? Yeah, he's too cool. All right. All right. All right. All right. Wally gagging over Don't here. Don't look the dip horse in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it. All right. I'm, I'm going to pull rank here and go next because I always go last and I hate it. Um, <laughs> and, 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 Mike, and Mike inspired me. I want to I want to go before you guys do, do my books. Um, <laughs> all right, so X Men, uh, animated series. When I obviously the t the main team, uh, uh, the main characters of the, of the X Men, all you know, iconic, but I mean, you know, them from the comics, you know, them from movies. So there's a handful of characters mm -hmm. that really outside of the main team really make me think of, um, of the series. And the first one is Bishop. Yeah. So I've got Bishop's first appearance. Dope. I always just think that's my... I learned of Bishop from the cartoon. And uh, it was cool when I got back into comics here to get his first appearance. And then sticking with Bishop, this cover just screamed the cartoon to me. Because oh, yeah. he's got Gambit there. And in the cartoon, if you rem remember, he comes back to take out Gambit, and that's your yeah. first introduction to to uh, Bishop. So this one just felt like the cartoon. The next character, again, introduced by the cartoon, is uh, is Cable. Cable. I uh, I always think of him. I think of him, you know, looking for Doctor Sadler. Who ended up being Apocalypse? Do um, Do you always when you see Cable? Do you always hear the slide guitar in your head? <laughs> I don't know if I hear the guitar, but I think of slide to whatever. Oh my know? goodness, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Every time they show it, I mean, you know, a yeah, cube, it's like computer so slide to yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I talked about it earlier. The Sentinels, 
I mean, the Sentinels are the Sentinels of the cartoon. Like when I think of the Sentinels, I hear their voice, <laughs> not the toy. <laughs> but uh, and like I just love the Sentinels because of the cartoon. So this one, that's cool, yeah. perfect cover. Obviously, this title's based off of the show, so uh, perfect one to bring. And then finally, the 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 other character, Sabretooth. I I feel like Sabretooth was such a monster in that in that show, and I'm pretty sure he's like the first character outside of the outside of the opening that you see in the first episode ever. Is he's like on a rampage? He throws a car, and then he's on the then it's on the TV, and it, it goes to Jubilee's parents. Right. Pretty sure that's that's there. So, anyways, but I thought of the episode when. Wolverine goes up to the Arctic and then he yes, saber tooth in Alaska or whatever, right? Down there yeah. and they have an epic fight in the in the oh, Arctic. Yeah. So, so this one I I had to I had to grab. Uh, I, Lucas Lucas is begging to be shouted out, Ryan. Oh, Lucas, consider yourself shout out, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, hello, hi, Lucas, Lucas. That's uh that's my cousin's son. So um shout out to Luke. Woo, Lucas. All right. <laughs> Thanks uh, for uh pointing that out. That those X-Men adventures, you can just go right over to Eric and to show your X-Men adventures. You ever notice that every single cover is like somebody with a scrunched face with them <laughs> their mouth wide open. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's true. All right, I'm gonna start. <laughs> <around. laughs> With something a little more modern, uh, and it's X Men '92 House of XC22. Now, this is when they took the '90s animated X Men and put them in Krakoa era. And this is actually the cover I like more. That's the one, yeah. Oh, that's an amazing cover. I love that cover because it's just that right there screams the animation. Show. Who signed yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Signed it. That's uh, David Naka. Nakiyama. 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 Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. And then, unfortunately, I got to throw this one out because somebody just showed it already. But that's why I got a big fat stack. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of that one, we're going to go with season two, number one from nice. five kids. Sinister. So, yeah, this is, I, I actually did not know that they did a season two. I just remember that season one. Um, I think they both ran only like. 15 issues or so. So, but yeah, Mr. Sinister right on the cover. Pretty cool. <laughs> Did somebody say fat stack? <laughs> <laughs> Get in, sugar. That's the word of the day. Uh, let's see. Next up, I have another X Men 92. This is volume one, number one. Uh, when did this come out? 2015. And this is awesome. Pepe Larez cover. Oh, Jubilee. Yeah, Jubilee. Yeah, Bowling, the the rest is great. yeah, yeah. That's dope. That was a fun series. Um, War Worlds. And then we got volume two, number one, X Men ninety two. Lovely, awesome. That X Men one again is David much. again. He was the regular artist on volume two. So this one reminds me of the opening from the yeah. animation where they're squaring off. Hundred percent. Can hear the music when you hold that up. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, and then I got this one. This is number five of that X Men '92 uh, cover where they're in Krakoa. And what I thought was cool about this is it's a homage to the original cover from Inferno. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can see them side to side there. They just yeah they made Jubilee the kind of the the turncoat in that series. <laughs> Which is fine by me. Chase her down. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> That's interesting. She's yeah. still a vampire. No, but oh, they, they always bring it up. Okay. Whenever Jubilee's in the comics, they bring up you were a vampire at one point, you know, that type of thing. So but yeah, and then just real quick, I'll just throw up some ones that made me think of the 90s cartoon is this the Toys R Us limited edition X-Men. Fighting the, the Sentinel there. Or um, I remember when these came out, the, the Marvel Age, and they're kind of promoting. This was the animated cartoon that never happened. 
right? Oh, okay, it's yeah. Like in the eighties, it just yeah. For some the reason, one uh, that has so Dazzler and a and an Australian Wolverine. Yeah, this is kind of X during those well, the times. The X She's just a kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but then I found this one too. When I was digging in my herbal age, and this was the actual series when it was coming out oh, in the nineties. Cool. So, little preview of it. That's like a promo book. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's interviews. With Marvel Age was their little preview thing that yeah. Out, so. Extraordinary X Men, just the artwork kind of reminded me of the animation style, you know. I mean, it's a totally different team, but Storm's gonna have closer a do closer to that in the in the new series. Pizza Hut, it was Pizza Hut collectors, yeah. Nice. Okay, last one. This one, another Pizza Hut. We got Bishop and Cyclops. Ooh, I don't think I've, I've seen that one. I've never seen that, yeah. That's cool. I have. That's pretty awesome. All right. Nice. Good work. Nice. Sweet. Who's up? Uh, I'll, I'll pop, pop it in. All right. So, uh, let's see here. What did I? What did I bring? Oh, okay. Um. So the you guys were out of some great ones that, that made me think like, Oh, I really gotta, I should bring something like that. But here's the first ones that I brought. I um, should bring something like that. I should bring something like that. But, uh, so I'll just talk about it instead, but, but here's what I did bring. Um, here's your, um, first, uh, Callisto, um, Morlocks Love the issue Morlocks. right here. Didn't realize there would be such a, a glare. Um, and so like I just I'm a loved this story, <laughs> like I think it was, was it one or two? I think it might have been two episodes. Yeah, um, I think it was over a couple episodes. Yeah, like I just loved the. Oh, oh, you know, uh, Mike had brought it up in his video today about how uh, we always just saw beautiful, um, beautiful mutants and and uh, you know that had these really useful powers and the Morlocks are kind of like ugly and unuseful mutant abilities and it really just like kind of drilled home that idea of how you know real or how like hated uh, mutants could actually be and um i just thought it was so cool that like storm you know did a hand-to-hand -hand battle that next issue uh 170 with uh, that red cover or storm mm. is like knife fighting yeah. Callisto. Oh. yeah that's the one that makes me think of the series is because you see them toe-to-toe -to -toe. um Oh. Another story they had to definitely change a lot in the cartoon because they didn't yeah. have a King Pride, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there was there was a lot about it that was changed, but the general, you know, yeah. idea of it was like hit me, and that yeah. that's why I really love that issue too. And like, I should probably be picking that up a lot more now because I do really like it. But and it's like you know you can always find like a near mint copy for like ten bucks, mm. so I feel like that's I should be stacking that, but I stack other ones all right so we have jubilee there you have it um this one does take place in a mall also yeah. right but the story is a bit different but it just this will always remind me of the animated series because the first time i ever saw this i always thought like i think i thought one of them was rogue or i'm sorry uh jubilee the first time i saw it i knew it was the first appearance and i just assumed that one of them were jubilee um in this issue yeah no issue sentinel in that. i don't think there's any sentinels in, in that. yeah no it's not the only same is jubilee and and a mall yeah I'm pretty sure. so, <laughs> um, so then the other thing that you showed was the um because she's a mall she, baby <laughs> <laughs> mall baby yeah that's right she says that um the Jim Lee's X Men, like really anything Jim Lee X Men, and this is just the one that I had here in my box. But otherwise, I'd maybe like pull out the um, that pink cover with Colossus uh, picking up the rubble, the first Jim Lee uh, yeah. art on X Men, and uh, and this is this just reminds me of it, just because I mean, just that stoic Jim Lee style uh, art. Speaking of which, um, pretty much anything. Anything X Men one through eleven from the mm -hmm. uh, '90s mm -hmm. series here, uh, love those. And um, and then the the other episode, the Days of Future Past. You mm. Can't you can't not show? I can't not show this. You know, 
It's here. <laughs> so it's here. Different. So different in the cartoon. So different. But but I mean, like when you brought up the bishop, um, yeah. you know, it just reminded me of of how cool that, that that's always been to me. Um that's it. That's all I got. It's a great point. So thank you. For, everything took place in a mall. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Letting me share. I think that was my life when I was in the, the end of high school. Was everything took place in the mall? Oh, absolutely! Ah, we're getting chili fries. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's nice. a great That's shirt. A sick shirt. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, all of my comic books are themed from malls. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> None of them are. That would be um, impressive. I'll show a book that I don't think anybody's shown before. Uh, pretty sure. Oh wait, <laughs> everybody! Oh, what? <laughs> but Jubilee, right? Like that Pepe Larez that Eric has of Jubilee's face. Like you're gonna watch that character explode because I feel like she is perfect teenage angst. And oh, at least yeah. for us '90s kids, it was just perfect. It's too bad that that uncanny first appearance doesn't have Jubilee on the cover. Oh, what a tragedy! Yeah, I hate when they do that for first appearances. Yeah, you know. But yeah, I get like it, right? Because they don't necessarily know it's going to be a big first appearance sometimes, right? Like, yeah, but you first page, it's like Jubilee doing tricks in a mall, you know? And it's it's all her story. It's it's great. Um, yeah, it's too bad that uh, oh, someone else had that uh, that Jim Lee X Men cover. I can't wait to go to Terrificon and have uh, Jim Lee and Claremont sign that book. They both worked on that book. The the pink one, the first uh the number three? Uh the, the no the the one with Wolverine and Captain America and uh, oh yeah, and, okay. You know, that's, oh uh, yeah, yeah. That'd be exciting. Oh so, that'd be a good one. You're right. Yeah. I didn't really uh I didn't really uh have much my, like Mike, I kind of just found myself stumbling in here and didn't really get to so I kind of grabbed some books, but my thought was like, what was the hype for me? And like, you know, the hype around the show and everything like that. Well, but when these books came out, I was fucking hyped. First one is X-Men 2099. Mm. <laughs> so hyped for this book. It wasn't very good, but just, you know, any future escape was a beautiful thing to me. And the Colossus character actually has a pretty interesting art. Like he got, he's this like handsome ladies man. And then he gets deformed Metal and he finds head, out right? that he's like going to be a father. And it's just like metalhead, metalhead. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I think I, think I, had... I said this before. This is the only comic series I've read an entire run when it came out. Mm. Oh, when it came out, I've read got every single one until it ended. You know, I was yeah. wicked into it. Yep. That was a rough series. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I was an idiot. I was a kid. <laughs> uh, and of course. You know, the they, they got us with all these, and you'll find these, you know, in every dollar bin there is. But this one has a Deadpool card in it. Ah. Hell that's yeah. The, that's the gem. Mm -hmm. you know, the diamond in the literal rough. Yeah, they're sure. <laughs> so what's cool about these next two is that they go together, and um, for every teenage boy who is reading X-Men – this uh, center, or at least prepubescent boy, these books, the original uh, pictures sent us crashing into puberty. Uh, but he, <laughs> these are the modern interpretations. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. And I just yeah. love it. I used to fantasize about all the different characters at the pool with me. <laughs> um, but here we go. I just got those. And I got the virgin variants of them as well. Yeah, these are great. So I've got to include some modern books that are throwbacks. Who's that on the far right? Your left hand, Josh, all the way to the right. I can't tell. No, this oh, over the here. The dark hair. Oh, no, the guy. Above Emma, right? Yeah, who is that? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think it's Tony Stark. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's Tony Stark. That's he's yeah, he's, because he's, he's like married, married to, to the White yeah. Queen. I just I was assuming as an X-Men character, I was like, I don't know who that is. And you know, and just looking at this, I really like my favorite Wolverine relationship, other than like his thruple with Gene and Scott, which I love. Um, is really he and Storm. Storm. 
I love mm. the idea of Wolverine and Storm. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. All day. Right. There was a story that had that 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 had a really solid relationship, and that kind of even goes all the way into the future. Wasn't it? It was related to. Uh, there you go, Dan. Good job, Dan. There it Hold is. Dan up. That's the original. Oh yeah. Yep. That's yep. the good original one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that story, though, I that story was phenomenal. They and because you know, they crossed time in that storyline, and that's what I thought was great. Because you got to see the them from from y younger all the way to older till they were going to die, and then things transition. And I and I love that. That was one of the. That was just really cool. I mean, I I, I can I if, if I can count a lot of stories of X Men that I could I could read X Men every day. Um, but that's those. That's one of those stories that really I remember sticking out to me uh, a lot. Um, and I'm a big fan of uh, Claremont's Extreme X Men storyline. I don't know if you guys yeah. ever read any of that. Yeah. I love that storyline too. That was another one that really kind of it, quintessential '90s, right? Because it technically takes off where Claremont was leaving. Yeah. In uh, at the end when he leaves, when he leaves X Men because he him and Jim Lee didn't have it, have it together and then Jim Lee leaves right after him it's just it's like that's a that was one of those times where it's like oh that's that sucked and then but Claremont, the, when he actually the Cuberts you know we got the Cuberts out of it so we did uh, we did i mean what they were already there though i mean they were doing yeah. stuff with they were doing other books all over marvel they were doing covers all over marvel um but yeah i mean you're right they kind of came in and got to be the the guys so. the main show yeah, I hear you though, Travis. It's like having a sports team, and then like two of your star players like don't get along. One of them leaves, and you're like, "Well, hey, at least we got rid of that guy." And the other guy's like, "Nah, now I'm out. I'm doing my own thing." Yeah, man. yeah. I have one. And then more when he question. leaves, then you lose John Byrne too, because John Byrne was writing uh, on Candy at that time too. So, Josh, you got one, one more. Book? I have one more book, and this is kind of for you, Ryan, but I think it might be for everybody. I just found this. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It doesn't really relate to anything we're talking about, but no, I grabbed no, but it, because... it. Josh, I saw you I post did. that. I was going to ask yeah. you about that. I, yeah. I asked Josh, like, what is that? Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's like one of those promotional books that would come out. I love out. those it promotional things. Ancient. Like, where did this costume set come from? <laughs> Look at Wolverine. Cool. Holy. I mean, this is the yeah. X-Men's costumes from uh, X Men 35. Right, like the the new introduction of the. Well, right? this is well, this I think is yeah. well, it's not giant size well, team, it? but yeah, it's the original. Is that awesome. like the new the new team? Right, that's the new X Men team, but basically. in old the old original the X Men one, one. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, awesome. I I so mean, I, like I I don't have never seen that anywhere. Else. I need to have it now. I when as soon as we saw it, Josh, I'm like, I have to have it. And this is the new Dave Stevens, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like this one and Foom, the Foom one, uh, I always forget the number, yeah. must have. You, you're right, Mike. That 35 was the Spider-Man one. This is this yeah. is what I was thinking of. Oh, this, yeah, okay. But I don't But I don't know. It's not Dang. this team. It's not this uh, costume. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Well, it has cheap. these costumes. Or something. <clears throat> yeah. Look on eBay. It ain't cheap. I, I got it super cheap, I think. How much does it go for? For like a, I, I see a damaged one here with twenty dollars. Other ones are thirty, sixty, forty. Okay. If you look at the last sales, I probably got it like a month ago or so. I don't remember how much I paid for it. It's yeah, we're I gonna try pull and up your exact sale and my wallet, <laughs> right, Ryan? Oh, <laughs> all right, Ryan. So I love your intros with the wallet. Yeah, we're we're all there, oh, buddy. Gosh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week for my next uh, video. It should be should be a good one. Um, so I also wanted to uh, do one other little show and tell game, and I gotta say this is courtesy of Dan's X Men comics. He, he gave me he gave this idea. It's pretty fun. It's this or that. You guys heard the heard the spiel on it. So basically, everybody brought two books. That are similarly um, <laughs> the same value, and the the group here is just going to basically pick 
this or that? Which which one would you rather have based on whatever criteria you deem to uh or that will will make your decision for you? So um who wants to I'll, let's I'll pick, start to, I was gonna to say Dan, you, you're you're the yeah. guy who came up with this. Um there we go. There I am. Um, so yeah, for this one, I, I was like normally thinking, um, you know, would you rather have, um, like, you know, two, two different books, but in this case, I wanted to bring out something a little different, uh, because I had just picked up this set of, um, of these Mark Jeweler, uh, issues. They're all a little lower grade than I thought they were, but, um, but I was curious what you guys think because, and I'm not sure what the value would be on it in comparison, but I think it's probably around the same. Would you rather have a near mint copy of this uh, X Men uh, 115 or the Mark Jeweler, probably like a 5.5 five version? Mm. You can see. Oh, I like this. Oh. So, so it is a Mark Jeweler. Interesting decision. This one's easy but for me. It's easy for me too. I uh, uh Mark well, Jeweler all day. Oh yeah? I mean let me, really? let me I'm telling you, it's it's a five five. Just take my word for it. There's like very light creasing. Uh, but I mean it does break color in certain areas, and the spine's probably the worst. So yeah, I'm with Richard and Lizzie in the chat, chat here. Yeah, uh, chat saying mint all day. Give me the oh, better mint. better yeah. quality book all day. I, I do not care about special insert type stuff. Which is yeah. Cool. Wait, but but I heard somebody else say Mark Jeweler. Yeah, oh, Josh, Josh, you just... Mark Jeweler, right? Josh. Yeah, it's the Mark Jeweler insert, right? You know, I don't see the Mark. I like never see this for sale, or like like they're all none of them are really like keys, but I mean they um you know like this era of um of uh. X Men. I'm not seeing a lot of Mark Jewelers out there. However, I think that's why I like it, just because I have that book on like over again. But for me, I don't have one with the Mark Jeweler insert, so that's I'd like that. That was that was kind of my logic when paying you know fair market value for them. Um, okay, so Josh, though, let's let's put it this way: if you didn't already have a copy, oh, near mint. Okay, yeah. so you go like near right me. now, I'm trying to upgrade my my X Men collection. As we know, I've mm. got them all, uh, <laughs> but now it's like upgrading it and like oh that old signatures thing. and things like <laughs> that. So yeah, near mint. Okay, if I could go well, back yeah. and do it again, I get oh, a near mint. Okay, <laughs> but but it seems yeah. like that's a consensus that then we can just move on to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Seems, seems all right. Seems so. Seems so. And, oh, oh, the chat can participate too. If it, yeah, yeah, no, they, and they have. They have. Excellent. 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 Yeah. Look at me. I'm flustered over here. All right. All right. Who's up next? I'll go. I'll go. So my original plan for this would have worked, except this morning I gave my comic book I had for this to Comic Spa to press. Originally, it was going to be first cover of Polaris against first cover of Havoc. But instead, hmm. I actually think I might have got a, a more interesting one. These are actually back-to-back -back comic books. Ready? I got a new copy of this the other day. Would you rather have Uncanny X-Men number 129, first appearance of Kitty Pride in Emma Frost and cameo of Hellfire Club? Uh, near mint minus, pretty good shape. Or the new kid on the block, first appearance. Great. Yes. Ooh. Now, I think a lot of people would have picked this one for years, but I think in this case, this is also incredibly high grade to the point where I might even send it to be graded. It's probably a 9 4. It's an important detail. Oh, it's Taylor yeah. Swift, right? 129 is what I've always been attracted to, and I still keep buying it. And um, <laughs> I mean, I, I sold my 130. I have two copies, but I sold one of them to try to, I, I regret it now because like, I feel like it is just not stopping. You know, if I was to flip it, one of these right now, it would be the 130. If I, if it was for my collection, it would be the 129. That's what I would say. Yeah. For me I'm, a, I'm a shadow cat guy all day. It doesn't matter the hype shadow cat all day, but I will say this. If we really, 
as a comic book community and movie community want to bring the the world together specifically i mean the american world together the right and the left we need to have taylor swift as dazzler in the movie <laughs> musical montage and at the well, end yeah. of it have deadpool cut her head off everyone never happy. do that i think i think that happy. would make everybody happy well, yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you guys my opinion here. I mean, I don't like John Romita Jr. I don't think he's I that agree. good. But this is the best cover he's ever done. And it does have something special that. about it. The trade I mean, dress. Look at that, those people. cheese grater abs. Yeah. But, I mean, this is the nicer book, definitely. Um, but, for me, personally, <laughs> Emma it's 129. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm, it's beginning of part two. So They're both for required. For reasons. Reasons. Lizzie's One got three. it, I think. Uh, that's... You sell the 130 right now. You buy the 129. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would definitely go 129. Just I, the way I think of it is, I'm not gonna probably sell either. So I would go 129. Um, and that's because it's a sick Colossus cover first and foremost. Um, oh yeah. And then, uh, and then secondly, it's got three. It's a three first appearance book like yeah that so like if you're if you're even playing the spec game you're more likely to hit on a book that's got three first appearances versus one right yeah so, um, i think i think and yeah it's john Byrne too and right. earlier <laughs> issue i could go on and on it's 129 right. yep i think there's a consensus nice. there 129 yeah 129 they're both great i mean they're both great come on i mean i i still need oh, a 130 but but I, I, I won twenty nine. Yeah, it's got to be a hard. It's got to be a hard decision, right? Both. Well, both. Travis, you might be able to buy a graded nine point four version soon from from Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I break up my break up my Claremont run. I have to get another one. <clears throat> I only got one. I got several of these, but I only got one of these. So I, I, I can't let one go until I have a replacement. I, there's something right. about I, that for me too. I, I'm I'm looking at buying raw books for for my for my run. I don't uh, right now. I and in fact, I, I I ended up buying two books that I don't even remember buying, and I actually have those <laughs> sitting right here, and I don't even know what uh, how when yeah, I did it. But I know what that's that. like. So, would you guys rather have <clears throat> probably the worst Wolverine cover that has ever existed? <laughs> <laughs> like okay, just admire yeah. the glory of oh, how bad. <laughs> Look at that! I mean, the details are that is so bad. Impressive. This is what PCP looks like. <laughs> 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 look, at, look at the bicep. He spent a look lot of time. Face. I don't even see why his teeth are sticking up. Like, oh like my god! <laughs> how does his shoulder do that? I've never noticed. It's like that it's like shoulder. his shoulder compressed on that side. The other it's side dislocated. Side. Yeah, it's in. It's pushed. Hey, you in. guys! <laughs> <laughs> I need That's somebody so... needs to explain that cover to me too. Like, is that oh, is that like it's a joke? Just, is he turning into a bat? It like... says one shot. Like, it is a one shot. Please let there and never be a revolver. Because after you read it, you want you want to shoot just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> I will say there is that Frank Miller book that just came out in the last. Oh, this takes. Oh the yeah, oh, hey, that's hey, that was just a that's cover though, wasn't it? I don't have it. This wins though. Or the John he... Cassidy cover that that uh, came out. All that deep. Oh yeah, that one's terrible. With Beast, it's terrible. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, look at this. This is just anatomy gone wrong. Man, those yeah. claws are yeah, as long as there's long there's long Kids, Sword. don't do drugs. It's hard to look at. <laughs> He's got katanas coming out of his hand. All right. So <laughs> would you rather this book or the uh, book that brought me back, back into comic book reading? And, like, I remember, so I, I hadn't um, collected comic books for about a decade. And then, like, a tractor beam, I got drawn into and like picking up my favorite character like finally his origin story um so just like the impact book or the terrible cover that should never be owned by anybody but what's at the so bottom terrible. of the origin book what's at the bottom of the origin book i can't it says part one the hill 
okay. which is probably like a fifteen to twenty dollar book. I'm not familiar with this book. book. Right. I got the trade from Brandon actually in one of his giveaways. That is an amazing story. Yeah. Origin. That is the origin of Wolverine, and it is yeah. by far one of the most phenomenally amazing stories. I love it, and it's a. Uh, Adam Kubert at his best, and yeah. they let him. They they it's it's not inked. There's no oh, ink geez. on it. He, it's all paint and pencils, and it's amazing. It's phenomenal, and the story is really amazing too because it kind of lays out this whole Wolverine story like we have always wanted to know, from when he was a little boy all the way till he you know leaves, and we find out that he's like from the. Early 1800s and it's or late 1700s. It's and what's amazing. wild that in continuity, we are reading the story of his origin, but Wolverine still doesn't know his origin. Yeah, he's got he so doesn't many know his origin <laughs> until House of M. Yeah, yeah. And so that that always. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that was a trip. <laughs> that is. Read this. Yeah. this Don't yeah. read this. <laughs> <laughs> But on them both. <laughs> there's novelty. There's novelty choice to the to the bad cover versus a cool yeah. story. I don't know. I don't know which one I'd pick. You know, I never knew the value of them, but I will say that I see the origins book all the time when I'm looking through the boxes. I never see now, that. Over I over. heard Origins two wasn't as good as this the original. No, but it, it gives us Dick Hen. Yeah. His son. Which, by the way, in like the new Wolverine run, really dark yeah. run, the Sabretooth War, he gets like eviscerated and turned into a you know happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, you should, anyways. That's no spoilers. Like it's a pretty good Wolverine run so far. Is, Is it Deacon go- or Decan? I heard you say Decan. Is it Decan? 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 I oh, okay. Decan is Lalandra's uh, brother. That- oh. The emperor with, with the emperor. Call him a hero. Dakin. Well, Dakin. I'm now because I pronounced I his name wrong. I'm gonna go throw myself on my sword. Uh, Harkari. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, have my origin, everybody. Just so you know, you, origin you, would be the one. You've been watching Shogun, haven't you? <laughs> oh, not yet. I I've you read know. the book. It is so good. Highly recommend. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would say I would go with the novelty bad cover, uh, and then I'll just read Origin on uh, Marvel Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, let's go with Travis. All right. So I went with a more of an emotional pick on this, right? So these are both in about the same condition. They're both about. They're both very good to very good, but uh, first one I would go had is uh, X Men two hundred five, my very favorite mm. all time X Men story, versus X Men two nineteen, my very first X Men story. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's well, cool. Two hundred five. I, I gotta go with uh, yeah Barry Windsor there, even though he's not my favorite. That cover, <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, and then the other one, is, I, I'm not a big fan of that cover. Um, oh. So, and yeah, the story's awesome. In in the, the yeah, their faces all look demonic in in uh, two nineteen. Two nineteen is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah two nineteen. It's it's Brett well, Blevins, and um and I've come to enjoy his art artistry because I feel like he's actually an actual good artist. I just don't think the inker on this one is favorable to him. Well, they're they're all kind of like possessed by like malice or something, right? In that story, correct. Yeah, they yeah. are exactly. And then it's also that classic line: uh, "Welcome to the X Men Havoc. Hope, Hope you survive." You survive. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so that's cool. Those are it's, good but point. I think there is more value in in two nineteen, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. Is there any other? Is there any key significance? I can't think of one, but. Uh, no. Actually, the key significance might. Let me check something here. Is it like first panels or something? I'm looking it up. Um, let me look at the very first page. I think it might be the first battle of Lady Death and Wolverine. I don't know if that's a key, though. 
Well, the other well that's right, that's, that's right. the uh, that's that's this yeah. one. That's definitely this one. Or Lady um, Death Strike. Yeah, that's, that's Lady Death Strike. Havoc, Havoc joins the. X-Men. I forget that Lady Death is yeah. like another Marvel, like another character, right? I think it's just Havoc joins the X Men, and the yeah. other one is the yeah. First. That's just Havoc joins the X Men, but this is like this page is like my favorite of all time pages, though. And he cut wakes cool. up after having the nightmare and has to release all that energy, and he runs out of the house and jumps out of bed with Polaris and runs out of the house and just. It, it just launches all that, that energy so cool. into space. So, so 205 cool. is the first uh, Lady like, Death Strike gets her cybernetic, yeah. you know. Oh, okay. But it's Isn't also it an iconic the, cover. Yeah. That's, I just looked it up on uh, Key Collector. Gotcha. Those are the two things. Yep. Cool. All right. 205. 205. Yeah. So I actually got two ready <laughs> if we have more time cool. um but i will do i'm a wolverine guy so i'm gonna go wolverine so sick I got, kid i'll be back okay man or not i love you guys if i'm not back <laughs> yeah <laughs> come in all right buddy love you too thanks love you too man all right so first one i got would you rather have 212 oh yeah First me uh was this this is the first Wolvie Sabretooth battle. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, I like this cover. It's Barry Windsor. Uh, he didn't yep. do the interiors, but I do like the cover. This was yes. very iconic for a teenager to see this on the shelf. Oh the color. Very clean looking. Yeah. Right. Or it, it's Rick Leonardi on the inside though. Yeah, so. I mean it's it's such a big difference though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it threw me a little bit. Yeah. Or would you rather have this one. No, oh, come on. Wolvie's first three. solo adventure. We got Chris Claremont on both, but one thirty. Windsor. I mean, uh, it's, it's one thirty three. Okay. But what if, okay, everybody says one thirty three, but what if the one thirty three was, you know, a VG plus? No, nah, that's my favorite Wolverine cover. Still, so. I still think because it's such it's such a lower issue and the it's got such bigger significance i take that i take the 133 yeah, no matter, yeah. Unless, unless it's got like mold and a cover coming off like, yeah i mean then i'm tossing you know, it then, but... then yeah but oh, really? it would well, have to what grade really would it have to go down to compared to like a near mint plus on on the 216 or, or is it wait what is it 217 i think if it was under a two i would probably go with the other one that's 212 212 212 thank you and 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 the reason why i would pick 212 over 133 not that uh, i mean 133 every day all the time <laughs> john Byrne, amazing right yeah the reason why i'd pick 212 is because i was reading x that th those comics when they were coming out yeah i got this uh, off the rack back in the reason. day this is my original copy so it's been yeah. very <laughs> well there, that, right there yeah that but, makes sense yeah I love 133. I love the cover, but I also has the best Wolverine panel of all time. Like, are up there. You know, when he's in the Ooh, Raptors there. 130. The yeah. One, oh, right. When he's on top before he yeah. drops down. Yeah, yeah. Show it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, there, yeah. Sam has, has, has uh, made the, the vote known. 133 could have been used as a doormat, and I'd still want to read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Pretty phenomenal. That was good. That was a good choice, though, Eric. That was a nice. Yeah, one. that was cool. All right. Oh, Rick Leonardi, sorry. Yeah, yeah pretty the, good. Rick Leonardi, man. He he's another one of those artists of that era that I, I kind of think of him as like he's like the uh, one of the most influential influential artists on my own art. There you go, Ryan. Mm. Oh yeah. Look at that Colossus. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I love his Colossus. I love his Storm, too. I mean, look at her yeah. Mohawk. I mean, yeah, he her Mohawk, Mohawk killer. Away. So killer, yes. For sure. All right. So, would you rather have <laughs> X-Men 109 in an 8-5 mm -hmm. first appearance of Weapon Alpha? Yeah. Yeah. I need, yeah, that, one. Like that, I need one. that one now. Okay. <laughs> or what's behind door number X Men? Oh, oh, uh, oh. In, a six, oh. in a six five 101. Yeah, yeah. 101. It not, well, I've never had a 10, uh, 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 never had a 109 before, so 
I've had a couple one hundred one. So similar value. Uh, 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 Beautiful. Money wise, you're you're coming up pretty even here. Oh really? Yep. Uh, one one. That surprises me. Yeah, I, I think one on one, one even though. I mean, this is this is, is definitely the bigger one. key, but it's a lower lower uh, grade. You're getting up into minty territory. We got I mean, a lot of one on ones in the chat. Yeah, I still rather. Well, yeah, Bruce is writing about ten of them. Bruce is the guy. I think one on one is winning. He's yelling. He's, He's yelling in the chat. Elite. That's all it the is. Real, the question for Bruce is: Would you rather have a one on one with color touch on the cover? I yeah. I want to put something. Bruce, would you send that shit back? Um, it's one on one. I, I would say that, like, because I value them as like one on one, kind of like at a base level, is like two hundred bucks. Like, like at a really those low end. Both, those are both kind of between four and five, um, from the from the values I looked up. I didn't like. No value. way is a one oh nine, unless it's like a Canadian price variant or uh, something. Well, it's unless it was, uh, unless it was an outlier sale, I just kind of looked up the because I feel like raws like mid to high grade the raws of that sell for like 60 80 well bucks. I do remember long for a long time that vindicator cover was like an expensive book like yeah. for a long time it was always I was always shocked by that. True. Really? so much yeah it's just it's dropped in the last year yeah oh maybe there was like a lot of spec and then people got like really tired of holding that or something yeah I'll look at mine in a while. yeah 101 though 101 but I then, think more people would rather have the is it 121 with the full team first appearance, yeah. Really? With the whole out, well, I think the one twenty, so. the one twenty, is uh, the more valuable book out of one twenty and one twenty one. Yeah, they, I feel like they used to be about the same value, but definitely one the one twenty took over. Chaos in Canada cover is yeah. that one is definitely the more valuable than the the snow one with the actual fighting. I, in it. I, I just like them both. I really wish I had them. They are pretty cool. <laughs> I love yeah. those. I gotta get I out. I gotta get the one twenty one in a in a grade slab, but uh, I have I have them both. Ryan, that was a good one because I, I'm a sucker for Alpha Flight, but you put up maybe the one book from that era that could have. I was it just trying to yeah. find like value, right? And then like it, it's an interesting this or that because of gr the grade, right? The grade drop. So yeah, yeah, I yeah really like that was a good one. I'm not I shocked, really, but I dig the difference between like how far do you have to go in the grade to like to swap to the other? Yeah, book, you know. All right, Josh. yeah, peace, Josh. All right, Josh. See you, buddy. Later, Josh, man. Well, I got one. I got a bonus one. Oh, Eric has more. Okay. I got a bonus one, and it's okay, actually fine. tailored. We, we, we can do a couple more. I, yeah. Okay. So this is kind of tailored to you, Ryan. It's a three-parter, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so first one, I'll go through them quick. First one, would you rather have Colossus getting his ass kicked by Jugs because mm -hmm. he broke somebody's heart? Or the first time oh, yeah. they Come womp on. on each other? 102. Come on now. Uh, or part three. Ooh. He gets the power of the juggernaut. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> all day. It's gonna be one hundred two. Although I really do like one eighty three of the story in that one. I love. Yeah, I love that. Well, yeah. Fear Part itself storyline was pretty awesome though too. I mean, Kieran Gillian did a great job of that. Yeah. Of that. And this was towards story. the end of the series. Yeah, I just don't lean towards modern over old vintage um and yeah. then yeah 102 is just so early on it's the first time juggy and colossus go to this one i just thought was took the cake away. he gets the power of juggernaut i'm like here's yeah. the thing eric i have all three so it's all good baby <laughs> <laughs> but the best part about him having those powers is it happened during x-men versus avengers and it was a complete x factor like he was completely Different, like, it, like all his fights he had, he fought against Spider Man and just like, wasted him. Like, completely beat <laughs> I have to read this, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is awesome. Um, I actually got a good one. I just realized it was just right behind me. I figured this is a good experiment for classic versus new because we oh. keep putting him up. It seems like the older I was winning. I'm gonna appeal to Dan here, okay. 141 in an 80 custom label, too. Custom label doesn't really match. I don't like when they put Jim Lee X Men label on. I agree, I agree. 
Or I did it with my 94, but I idiot. Didn't, I just want <laughs> or wait for this. Ooh, hey. Hey. Right at nine, eight. hey, that's all right. What do you think? I'm like trying to crunch numbers in my head here, right? I know. They're close. I, I would go with the nine eight. Well, I'm going to go with the uh, the eight zero, and here's the reason why: I've never owned that book. I have had, I have four of those. Yeah, but I don't have one of those. This is a really good one. Ooh, this is really good. There, I have. Oh yeah, have, signed. Jim Lee or Claremont. This I is have, signed by Scott Williams. Oh, killer, killer. Oh yeah, that I see it across the, okay. the top there, right? I, yeah, I, I actually like have the uh, X Men four and a nine eight, but um. Yeah, I th- I kind of like I w- I think easy with, for Pam. I, huh? I had a slabbed copy of the of the I forget the number now. One forty one. One forty one. I think I, I would go one forty one. I probably want to get a higher higher grade just because I'm becoming a bit more of a higher. But you got to change that label. I feel yeah. like though you crack you crack that out as a raw and that looks like a beautiful eight. Dude, it's this is the most copy. annoying eight zero I own. I have no idea why this is an eight zero. None. Yeah, that'll be a fun, fun crack out. Did, you, um, did you grade it or did you just buy it graded? I bought it. Like I traded for it, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I, don't, I have no idea. I Crack imagine out. the value is about 150 bucks or so for either of them, is my guess. What do you think? Which is painful because that 98 was so much more expensive. So this one here, uh, again, my friends were selling it for 125. I got it for like a hundred ish in cash and trade, right? Cool. So it's worth about 100. I saw one on eBay for 90 without shipping, right? So it's about 100. Oh, okay. This one goes for a little over 100. I've seen it go down like 80s, whatever. I caught this on Whatnot for 60 bucks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which, is a, which is a good price. But, uh, Dude, I don't know. Cool. Mine for almost 300 bucks. In I think I have to play like both sides again, like the way that I did with your. You got these are great ones because I feel like the. The 141 is the, is the book you want for your collection. That's right. the one that means more. That's the one you just get the joy for. But a 9.8 X-Men 4 is super liquid as well and easy to trade for, like, trade up. Use it as trade bait for something. The 9.8. If it was a 9.6, I'd be a eight. Course, it's trash. That's oh, the yeah. only reason I'm holding this because <laughs> the only reason there's a dilemma at all, it's a 9.8. Yeah. So. Yes, 100%. And I already have both, so like I got like five of these now. Like, I just keep yeah, them. Like, yeah. it's the one forty one. That's that's the answer. Yeah, uh, yeah, be. yeah. I mean, I, this, I is, really, this is one of my favorite X Men covers. Period. I mean, like, oh, okay, yeah. so good. Oh, I love this game. I want a T shirt. I want to make a T shirt of just like that. That yes, stuff. I want the Scotty Young oh, version like of a black T shirt. Oh man, that'd be so. Make good. it like a, a circle, like the just Scotty the Young did a version, his version of that cover and it looks really cool to see little calvin and hobbs wolverine oh yeah (laughs) yeah all right so going back to the very beginning taking us all the way back to the beginning of the chat uh with the with with talking about x-men 90 you know 97 and all that stuff i happen to find uh so carrie andrew i don't know if anybody else is likes carrie andrews carrie andrews is this cover artist who's kind of doing a lot of mock-ups of the 1990s style art really good artist he is just phenomenal and um well this cover i felt like as soon as i, I was thinking that we were seeing other people pull up other stuff with you know you know all the characters but this this cover is really cool it's a rogan gambit number one it's a modern book but it has that 90s feel yeah you know that yeah. whole everything and I mean, then but it also has it's spidey it has Spidey on it, but it has Jubilee, the bubble. Jubilee, Wolverine, Gambit, and Rogue, and and it's supposed to. I think it's Savage Land as well. I was gonna yeah. say it's it's Savage Land. Land. Yeah, shattered and stuff, right? Yeah. So I, I just I, I I saw it. I remembered that I had it. And I wanted to pull it out and show it to you guys. Oh, good call. Nice. I haven't seen that. So. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I have a it's bunch of Carrie that. Andrews. I keep buying Carrie Andrews left and right. And if I can, if I find it, I'm buying it. Uh, there's a really cool, uh, uh, there's a really cool version of Wolverine number one, the from the uh, uh, reprint of Wolverine number one, 
that Carrie Andrews did. It just it has Wolverine and uh, and not Mariko, the other on on Jin or the girl the other girl the 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 ninja that he join gets becomes friends with in that series so the the black the girl with the the other the female bird girl and not not the one he's going to marry the Is other one UK? I, I nope. see the UK well, who, who lady I can see becomes, the name right? but I can't say it <laughs> it's who lady deathstrike be, who was that De lady deathstrike was before right i mean it's this the 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 woman that Lady Deathstrike was before is the is this person. So, I think I'm pretty sure. I could Just show that cover again the the Savage Land cover. The, this one. Yeah, is that that's the newest Rogan Gambit? Look at the, look at the, yeah. Series? Okay. Does everybody's eyes go directly to Rogue's assets at her yeah. assets? <laughs> that that is bodacious. Insane. Very 1990s. Certainly not going to get that in X Men '97. That's all. That's I what I understand. <laughs> oh, that's like a like holographic those... style background or something. Yeah, it's a so they so they there is a holographic version of this, right? That was actually you could actually was sent out to comic book stores. What this is is he did he did all the drawing of the fake holographic on the whole thing. Oh, that's neat. And then they added the holographic to it afterwards. So I think I think that's it. Philly and it says 1990s in the whole, all across the, all in the background as well. Hey Travis, was it Yukio? I think it's Yukio. Yukio, yeah, I think Yukio. Okay. Yukio. I just couldn't yeah. say it. it. Didn't want to come out. Because Mariko is his, Mariko was the one who be, he, he mar was going to marry. Was, was, was going to marry, marry, yeah. Yukio, it was the one from the Kitty Pride uh, miniseries, right? Right. Yeah. Gentlemen. And uh, Yukio is Lady Death. That's right. Sure. I have to go. Yeah, for life. I'm gonna wrap it up. So oh, okay, uh, I'll stick. I'll stick around. Sounds yeah. good. Uh, does anybody have anything upcoming that they want to plug before we say good night? I I I I have a, a bigger one. Oh yeah. Do you want me to do it? Do you do want it. to make a live premiere of it right oh, now? Oh, my video? yes, 100%. yes. <laughs> I I was gonna mention it, but I was like, I'll let Mike. I don't know if Mike wants to to go right. here. All right, history. history. Make them big. Everybody's history. You're seeing it here first. Woo! Oh, that is so <laughs> pretty. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that looks yeah. really sharp, Mike. Okay. So first of all, I know again rose tinted glasses and all, but tell me this isn't the best one point eight you've ever seen. <laughs> that is I sharp. mean, yes. guys. Like so, on the cover, Minus there's no really blemishes. There is uh, Iceman. There's a little color lift, like fading right his head, and on the comic code, is a little faded. On the back, you yeah. think the back must be bad? Nope. All the damage is on the spine, so it's split from here to here, and the staples not attached to the back cover. But that is it. Wow. All the damage on the spine, you can't see. It looks like a three, three, five. Oh, that's one crazy. Eight. So, yeah, that's crazy. The colors look good too. Crazy. Like I have a one point eight behind me. It's missing a whole oh, corner. And like oh, yeah, this is better than my giant size X Men number one, which is a two point five. So. Acquired his his Grail of Grail. How does that so, feel? How's it feel? I want to know. So it's funny. It's two. There's two feelings. One, a lot of times we talk about this. You get a book and then you're like, oh, you're over it. I got a book. Big whoop. Like then you wait, look for the next thing. I don't have that feeling. I've looked at this book also because it looks so much better than I thought it would be. Every time I walk by it, I'm just like blown away that I have it. So yeah, it, it feels amazing. But there's also like this like relaxing, like it's over. Like again, I'm still going on. I'm still gonna be getting comic books, but like I feel like this is a huge burden lifted. You're like, Thanos in the garden looking over a, a thankful universe. That's, that's really <laughs> cool. that's it. Everything else now is cut I off. I have no direction. I'm just happy. I wish I but it doesn't matter, right? Because right? you've you've got it. Like got there's it. nothing, no more. Uh, no more duties, no more, uh, you know, anything for you. And there's nothing left, you know. No, I mean, it's a little, I still want like X Men number four, that's like something. the big one, right? Um, Daredevil, but, but F again, F part of this is I always picture in my mind the X Men the one I got was gonna be really low grade and look like crap. Yeah. I was settling for just a piece of garbage. <laughs> 
buy the book, not the grade. This does not matter. This book is crazy good looking. I cannot believe how good looking it is. So for me, uh, I'm, I could not be happier. The price I got, and again, and I, in my video, I talk all about it. The thing I sold to get the money for this cost me five bucks. Five dollars I found in a strange and unusual place. I flipped it and got my grail. So, I mean, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Yes, it seems unattainable. Never thought I could have this book, and you're just going to get lucky one time. Just keep trying. Just keep yeah. at it. Amazing things you can could, happen. You could chase the first appearance of the first Marvel mutant ever. Uh, <laughs> Namor. Name Why or... would you put that in my head? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you mean you mean that movie brochure <laughs> book? Because I'm trying Just to show you enjoy the journey. It for a the minute. journey can continue. The yes, journey exactly. Continue. Of course. I'm okay not having uh, a big goal right now. I uh, but here's the here's the kicker. I have like no lunch money left. My lunch money comics <laughs> buying account is like gone, right. and I'm like nervous because I had the money. It was always like if I found a cool collection, I'd like to have the option of buying a collection and making more money. That's that's gone. Like this is it. You guys are gonna see like dollar books for the next you know two months on my channel. But I mean, who well, cares? Guys, yeah, well worth it. Uh, Mike, I really love that that story too. Like like you said about about being able to find that book for five. You know, it's like it's true. Like you know, it's possible that nobody will ever be able to do that. You know, like get like a five dollar book that that they can turn into this. But. Uh, but I do appreciate what you're saying there because it's not um, because it, it's true. You will, when you try and you apply yourself, it's not because you have a YouTube channel, you know, like you getting that $5 comic had nothing to do, nothing to do with it. Well, you didn't get hooked up or anything, you know, it's nope. like this was, and I've found like out of trying really hard to get comics, I always would look at YouTubers and be like, well, that's just because that's you or you yeah. have these connections and all these things. And I, I, I can't do that. Right. And even though I haven't gone to that length, I've, when I look back at what I've done over the last couple of years, I'm amazed. And it is due to things like just what I've learned from guys like you, you know, oh, like you. seeing you guys go and, and picking up these books and, uh, you know, recognizing the value of them, selling them and getting the bigger books that you've right. always loved. And, um, you know, you try hard, you keep looking, you stay, you know, you stay focused on what you're doing and you're going to get those things yeah. are going to fall and come to you. And I, you know, what I say in, the, in my video on Friday, I said, you know, it's because it's a story of failure, right? Like, because everyone sees the good things I find, but it's because they don't see the 99 times I strike out and get nothing. But it's not just not like, it's not just getting lucky and finding stuff. It's the people you meet along the way. You know that it's not the destination, it's the journey and the people you meet along the way. It is the friends because mm -hmm. this, getting this book is a story of a lot of people I met. Yeah, it had nothing to do with Lunch Money Comics, but the fact that I had a friend who was looking out, told me about this estate sale. I found the estate sale. Um, I happen to know Alan, the comic collector geek, helped me figure out what the Archie was all about and gave me some money for that stuff. And I knew Comic Spa, who cleaned and pressed it, and it just goes on and on. Rohan from Absolute Game of Nerds knew Steve Borok, had his cell phone number, and he's, you know, the, it goes on and on. But it's like it takes a village, and it was just yeah. because of the connections of, of people I made in the hobby. So that's the other thing. It's not just hunkering down and chipping away and trying to find amazing things in the wild. It's about meeting people. It's about networking. And yeah. uh, that's a huge part of it. And I have a lot of people to thank for yeah. Right on. I do want to answer a couple of the comments though. First, uh, Richard Westfall, how many points? Let's see, uh, seven. <laughs> I already knew it was seven. Uh, seven, pretty much any set. You have the six X Men, you know, including Professor X, Magneto, and then the team card. So it's going to be seven points. You're going to crush that. You're going to have every point for every card, I for, think. Maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do, and I do want to know why Colossus is a fraud. Got to watch my la latest video. <laughs> it's because <laughs> I bought something big recently um i saw that yeah i can grab it but uh yeah you can watch it in my other video yeah. we're watching we're, we're, we're all recently. frauds though yeah, we are all frauds. yeah we are yeah. we are all frauds speaking so, of frauds so. no go ahead go ahead oh i was gonna say yeah, I, I i i have a video coming out a week from today where i'll talk about the whole story actually open the box right off the bat 20 minute story about how i got it trying to inspire people great but i wanted to debut it tonight on the on this council so i was happy to show off to the world thank you for it we yeah. thank you for amazing it. Awesome, Mike. beautiful amazing. First, time, first time in x well actually i think maybe josh showed an s josh had one yeah, josh yeah. Had yeah. i wanted yeah. josh to see it i wanted him to see it he hasn't seen it yet so we'll we'll message him in the chat to be like to he might have actually maybe he maybe he's still i don't know um, we'll 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 catch the last little bit here um so yeah, so you you got that video coming out when Mike? 
Uh, yeah, I have another video on Monday, but it'll be Friday when I do my next, whole thing. next week. Nice. Week. Okay. And uh, Eric, anything coming up? Uh, I actually, before we jumped on, was finishing off um, saving of the, my next video that's going to drop sometime tomorrow, where I actually call out Dan, who I'm staring at. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of give you a little bit of a shout out in the next video, because nice. uh, I acquired something that I am blaming on you, because <laughs> you started me down a rabbit hole. Uh, meaning <laughs> foreign comics. <laughs> got you, got you. Well, we'll have to watch that for sure. Uh, well, thank you. I'm flattered. Travis, what's what's going on? What's next for well, you? Well, so I have a video coming out. Well, come out tonight uh, at midnight. I, I've been putting my videos out at midnight just because that way I don't have to think about it. Um, what ends up happening if I think about it too much, I get obsessed. And then I stare at my phone for like an hour and realize, oh my God, an hour of my work has just gone by and I didn't do anything but check my <laughs> stats. Okay, no, no, I got to do that anymore. So so I, I, I've totally changed it so that I do not even know what's going to happen to my videos until the next day and it's all good and it's already happened. And I like that. It makes it a lot less chaotic for me. So yeah, I'm doing a, and, and uh, my next art video. Um, so I'm doing a, it not I'm doing an X-Men comic next for my my next art video and, and it happens to be for someone in this room. Not there, a little <laughs> bit further over, over there. And so yeah, Mike, uh, I, I've been uh, so uh, out of I, it's not a secret anymore. I'm drawing a comic book for all my the, all the friends in our in our in our uh, Ill Illuminati squad. And so uh, I was uh, I was talking about it, and I was going to be doing like everybody's Illuminati character, and then I decided that that it, that that's not really who everybody is, so or what everybody likes. So I went with the character that they like, and so um, Mike's I, I started yet Mike's uh, actually yesterday. So I've got the sketch portion of it done, and I'm going to start doing coloring video like I've been doing. I'm going to do some coloring videos where I'll do. Where I'll, my, I might even go on live and do do the coloring live, and then cut it up into shorts like I did with the other one. So, awesome. but anyway, I got a preview. That's, that's, it looks amazing. So, and I have so, a spot picked up for it next to my other uh, Brian Bigby gave me a Nightcrawler. I have a spot right perfect. It'll be great. I can't wait to see it. So, it's awesome. a, yeah, cool. it's an X Men number one. In fact, so you'll get another X Men number one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So. So I mentioned a while ago that I bought some comics that I don't remember buying. And uh, these fall in the Dan category because they're books that I think Dan would have picked up if he would have saw them. I didn't get them on eBay. I don't know where I bought them at. I can't find it anywhere in my receipts. So I got a 132. Oh, love that. Newsy. Now that's got my favorite panel, the last panel in that one, if you, if you know. Wait, he's in the sewers, right? You got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. It's kind of beat up, Mister A. But yeah, I read that page for us last uh, last episode. Yes, there I it is. Yeah, yeah, I didn't one for this one. But I didn't have a one thirty two, so I I'm, I'm glad I I'm glad whatever I bought it that I bought it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I picked up a one thirty eight as well. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And same same person got it from the same guy, but I don't remember buying it at I all. I need a new one of that one. The one I have. Whoever, whatever kid had it, wrote their name all over it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you guys before. That book right there is my most read comic book of all time. I always think that about one? you since I heard you mention that. Now, true. it's absolutely true. I used to read that thing to death. Yeah, that's a great one to pick up too because it's like you can find it all the time for like 15, 20 bucks. Like, I actually had the X Men mm -hmm. Classic version first, and then I had that because that's all I could afford as a kid. But it's a history of the X Men. It's a recap, yeah. and it's the best. Dig it. So I don't oh. want to keep Dan too much longer. He wanted to leave already a long time ago. So um, I'm just going to mention I got a video uh, probably coming out on Monday. Uh, should be pretty fun if you liked my uh, 
opening to my most recent video. I'm sure you're gonna like this one. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we'll, we're gonna we're gonna be back with the council. I'm sure in the next couple weeks. And we're also I said off the top of the the show we're going. I can't remember the date we decided, but we're uh, doing an X Men collector chat with our friend Bruce from Up North Comics. Uh, so he will be our next, uh, member of the council. And then a big shout out to our council members who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, Brian, big McFly, the comic guy, uh, Chris from Shatter Comics and our new, uh, inductees, John from John's Comics with Kids and Justin from No Good Comics. John would have been with us if I hadn't, uh, rescheduled this last episode, uh, last week. So uh, apologies to everybody who was gonna watch last uh last week but uh you know things come up so uh glad we could do it tonight and uh gentlemen thank you all for uh for coming on and being with us shout out to uh josh as well from sasquatch comics and i hereby close this session this third session of the uh council of x and uh hope everybody who's been watching has a great weekend thank you for watching as always uh huge oh, we didn't get to talk about ultimate x-men oh yeah <laughs> we'll get there. We'll, next time, we're gonna talk about it next next stream all right yeah yeah that's definitely everybody have a great weekend bye guys see y'all bye.